Howdy y'all, it's Gauntlet Tex, and today we're going to be playing our very first draft of the brand new Outlaws of Thunder Junction format. Without further ado, let's see where the cards take us today. Alright, so this is an insane pack one pick one as you can see. This is a format with multiple bonus sheets. So we have a rare from the main set. We have two rares from the normal bonus sheet. Normally you only get one card from the crimes bonus sheet in each pack, but... Uh, sometimes you'll get two because it's replicating what would happen if you opened up a foil from the crime bonus sheet because then you would get two of them. Uh, and we also have a card from the big score bonus sheet, which is like an alternate subset. These ones are not one per pack. They're one in every like six or something much more rare because they're all mythics. So uh, whatever we take here, we're passing incredible cards. I think the Ornery Tumblewag is the best by a little bit. A 3-mana 2-2 two -two that gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter onto one of your creatures at the beginning of combat on every single turn just stacks up real quickly and snowballs from there. Just becomes completely insane. But Hostile Investigator is also really good. 4-mana four 4-3, four, your opponent discards a card and you get a clue token. Really hard choice there. Those two rares looked super busted, and I'm sure the cards from the Crime bonus sheets were pretty good as well. But, I mean, what can you do when you open four rares? You can't take all of them. You're going to have to take whatever looks just slightly better than the rest. And I think that's probably the tumble wag for just big damage quick. You can get quite a board state off of this one card. For pick two, now we can stick to green with a very solid uncommon. Outcaster Greenblade would be a good card if it didn't have any bonus text on it. If it was just a 3-mana 1-2 that grabbed whatever land you need out of your deck when you played it, that would already be a good 2-for-1, especially in any deck that's trying to splash. But it's also getting beefed up for each desert you control, and it can search for a desert instead of a basic, so it's kind of like a 3-mana 2-3 that finds a land from your deck at worst. And if you have enough deserts in your deck, sometimes this card can get really, really big. So I think the green blade looks like an excellent follow-up to stick to green and just take another excellent value play. Pick three now. I am a big fan of this town ain't big enough. It is a two-mana bounce spell if you bounce one of your cards and one of your opponent's cards, or five mana to bounce two of your opponent's cards. So I think that is one of the strongest cards in this pack. The bandit looks pretty cool. Again, I don't know the set perfectly yet. This is my first full-on draft of the format. But yeah, I think this town ain't big enough is the strongest card in the pack by a little bit, but Patient Naturalist is very close to as good as that. Similar to the Green Blade, it's just a really good two-for-one value play, a three-mana two-three that also draws a land card to your hand. This one, you don't get to search for it. It's whatever you mill into. But still, 3-mana 2-3 two, draw card's pretty good, even if that card's a dedicated land. So we could absolutely just stick to green for now, or we could take that bounce spell. I'll go ahead and stick to green with the Patient Naturalist. Choose our second color later when we're more confident in what is the most open color. Pick 4, Fierce Retribution. It's fine removal out of white. Coyote's a fine little aggro card. We could take the Arid Archway just because it's a desert, but this would be pretty mediocre if we're trying to splash around, because then we would have a full colorless land in the deck, which can be awkward. I like Holy Cow a lot. It's hilarious, but also 3-mana 2-2 two, two Flyer, you can play at instant speed, and you get Enter the Battlefield Upside with a Gain 2 and Scry 1. That's pretty wild. That's a lot of good text on that card. Yeah, Coyote or Holy Cow or Fierce Retribution, something like that here. I'm going to try out the Cow. Maybe we get to go green-white. The other thing that would be nice about moving into white is that we do have a Tumblewag here, which is a mount. So it's going to get better if we saddle another one of our creatures or tap another one of our creatures to use its ability. And green, white have some cards that care about the whole mountain saddle synergies and stuff like that. There are cards that will be better if we control a mount and cards that are really good at saddling our mounts. Pick five. I like Mirage Mesa a bunch. It's going to work great with our green blade and it's going to be mana fixing no matter what colors we end up playing. So that looks solid if there's no great commons or uncommons here, and none of these look great. I guess Dance of the Tumbleweeds could be fun too, another way to pull a desert out of the deck. 
Uh, this another round rare. You basically spend a whole ton of mana just to redo all your enter the battlefield effects. So it's pretty narrow. Similar to how Obeka is pretty narrow. This one would be insanely hard to build around in draft. You get extra upkeeps. There are not a ton of ways to get value in your upkeep and draft. Fun commander to build around. Not really a great card to draft around, though. Uh, we could take another mount here with the Erynx, or we could just stay wide open with more mana fixing. Mirage Mesa, that's a mana fixing desert for any deck we play. Works great with that green blade. Yeah, I think either of these would be excellent options, but I'm going to stick to the, the green blade here. Get another Mirage Mesa. That 100% makes the cut. Pick number seven. All right, well... We've got another Holy Cow. We could splash in a little bit of red, even if we go green-white. Then we can go green-white, splash red, or we could go green-red, splash white. This is pretty good as a finisher. You do want to have a lot of mana before you cast this. Ideally, at five or more mana is when you're getting a pretty good deal. Um, but then you are just flooding the board so much, you can really end the game with this card. So that seems pretty good. Snakeskin Veil is great at protecting really important creatures, and we do have one really, really important creature with Tumblewax. That's an option too. But I think Snakeskin Veil is not the kind of card you really want more than one or two copies of in your deck, so hopefully we can just find one of those later. I feel like Form of Posse is a bit less replaceable uh, if we do manage to splash that in. Pick eight. Now we've got Spinewood's Paladin. Really beefy for the mana cost. We can plot this for four mana to cast it for free on turn five, the turn after we plot it. Um, alternatively, though, there's a green red dual land to help us go green red white with Forma Posse. And this is also a desert. I really like deserts. <laughs> this might be because I've got my own Hazazon Commander deck here and not because I'm making the correct picks, but hey. We'll have a beefy green blade at the very least. Pick nine. Um, Imp's Mischief. This is a black redirect spell. It's cute. Not insane. Vigilante really depends on the amount of crimes you can commit, but two mana, two, two double strikes. Kind of wild, so I think I will take that here. The other white creatures look pretty good too, um, but that's the coolest one for sure. One of the really nice things about these desert lands is that they do commit crimes. They are crime lands. You are targeting your opponent, so you're committing a crime. Uh, committing a crime, of course, being targeting your opponent or any of their nonsense, anything on board or in their grave. So take the red-white duel now to commit another crime, although steer clear is really efficient removal if you control a mount one mana for four damage. Uh, so I'll take that out of this pack over the wanted griffin. Because um, we do have one mount right now, and we're heavier into green-white than any other colors. And green and white are the mount colors, as I said before. Now we've got a random armadillo, which is cute. We've got a random griffin, which is less cute, but it's a griffin, so that's cool. Now we are on to pack two, pick number one. And we're already kind of splashing around in the Naya color trio in red, green, and white, so if this rare is any good, we could try it out. Let's see, four mana to deal five damage to a creature or Planeswalker and opponent controls, and if a legendary... If a triggered ability of a legendary creature we control triggers, it does it twice, so it's like four mana hard to cast removal right now because we have zero legends currently. Yeah. I mean, there's... A decent amount of legendaries in the set, but still not enough that I think we could reliably get any extra value off of this when we don't have a single legend in the deck so far. So yeah, four mana, really hard to cast, five damage removal, probably not the greatest. I think I'd rather just take the massive beef that is the Cactus Folk Sure Shot, a four mana, four, four reach, ward two. Just a beefy creature for the mana cost that's hard to kill. That also gives you tons of upside if you play any other beefy creatures. You know, any other power four or greater creatures are just hasty tramplers for the rest of the game. Pack two, pick two. Well, speaking of beefy power four or greater creatures, the stagecoach uh, security works pretty great with that sure shot. And it's got an excellent enter the battlefield effect, so I kind of like that beef at the top of the curve. We don't have a lot of removal right now, just one steer clear, so the Thunder Salvo might be okay as well. Although our deck is not particularly good at playing extra spells, so two mana instant, two damage is kind of bad. Um, this is much better than like blue, red, or any deck with a lot of plotting going on, where you can exile your spells to cast them on a later turn. 
Yeah, I'll just take the beef here. Let's go for the big stagecoach security. Pick number three. Speaking of beef, now here's a three mana four two on curve to go with that cactus folk sure shot. It's also another mount to make our steer clear a little bit better, as well as any other mount synergies we manage to pick up. Card seems pretty fine. Naturalist, again, is a pretty good value play, um, but we don't really care about our graveyard at all, so it's not going to have any synergies for us. In a vacuum, I think a naturalist is going to be better than Grizzly most of the time, but I think this might be a good Grizzly deck for Sure Shot and any Steer Clear style cards we get to pick up. Pick four. Ooh, four mana, four, four Vigilance with Saddle Upside. If we have some creatures on board that are too small to effectively get into combat well, um, like some 1-1s one -ones that aren't going to attack or block well, we might as well saddle up the Giant Beaver with them and get a counter onto one of them. And thanks to having Vigilance, it makes sure you're still going to have good blocks, even if you are saddling and tapping a bunch of your other creatures. You'll still have a 4-4 four -four on blocks, so I like that a lot. Betrayal at the Vault is a little expensive, it can be a total blowout where you kill two of your opponent's creatures off of one removal spell. My problem with this is that the more expensive the green removal is, the more likely you are to be the one getting blown out. Because it's easier for your opponent to have their own instant speed stuff up that late in the game to interact and bounce your creature or kill it before your removal resolves. Okay... Just checking out the mana curve here. We've got a lot of creatures right now is what it looks like, so we want some more good removal spells and stuff, non-creature spells in green and white. We want more two drops as well. So Outlaw Medic or Voracious Varmint. I think I like the Varmint a little better because we're a little more aggressive, but Medic is solid value. Always replacing itself with Cardra when it dies. Alright, well this is perfect. We wanted more non-creature spells, we wanted more removal, and there we go. That's a non-creature spell that is removal. It's also fixing for our red cards, so Buried in the Garden looks beautiful. Although, we wanted more two-mana creatures as well, and the Entertainer is a pretty good one if you play your creatures off curve. So, if you wait till you have four lands on board to play your three-mana creature, then you can play your three-mana creature and put a counter on it, which is pretty good. But uh, I think Buried in the Garden is excellent, so I will take that. Pick seven, there we go. Here's a solid two mana creature that we can take without passing up on any uh, good non-creature spells. So get an Erinx in here. Pick eight. Uh, guess the Wanted Griffin. I don't think I want deserts bad enough to play off-color deserts as tap lands with the green blade. Maybe we do, but I don't know. I don't think so. Pick nine, take up the shield is a very good combat trick. This was one of the best cards in Dominar United, and that set wasn't even that aggressive. So I feel like this is just a really, really good trick. Yeah, I'll take this over steer clear. It's really good on beefy creatures as well. So it seems particularly well suited for a green white deck where you have gigantic beavers and stuff. Make this a 5-5 indestructible lifelink. That's a huge life point swing. It's going to be hard for your opponent to race through all that extra life you just gained. All right, well, we get the Betrayal at the Vault to wheel. But again, I'm always quite nervous about these green removal spells when they get that expensive. We basically have a whole deck here. We've got a few lands, so we're not quite at 23 non-land cards, which is where you want to be, but... For the most part, the final pack's just going to be focused on making the deck a bit better. Now we've got Annie Flash the Veteran. This is another Naya rare. Six mana for a 4-5 you can cast at instant speed. When she enters the battlefield, return a permanence with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. When she becomes tapped, exile the top two cards to the library. You may play them this turn. Oh my god. So you can cast her in, ambush one of their attacking creatures, and eat it. You reanimate something when you play her, so even if she immediately dies, she's a two for one. And if she doesn't immediately die and she gets to start saddling some mounts or just attacking, you're drawing extra cards. Yeah, that's definitely going in the deck. That seems excellent. Pack three, pick two, the Trojan Horse, Smuggler's Surprise. What is this? 
one green mana, but you have to spree onto it. You have to spend some additional mana to get some additional effect. So for three mana at instant speed, you can mill four, put two creatures or lands from the milled cards into your hand. So that's a solid instant speed draw spell. Um, for six mana at instant speed, you put two creatures from your hand on the battlefield. That's really bad and limited. Um, and then for two mana at instant speed, creature control with power four or greater gain hexproof and destructible till end of turn. This doesn't actually seem that good. I mean, the instant speed card draw aspect is fine, and we do need more creatures, or sorry, more non-creatures, so I'll try it out. The flexibility probably makes it pretty decent, but it's certainly not the most exciting uh, of the spree rares that I've seen. Pack 3, pick 3, we've got a Leyline Binding, which isn't insane in this deck. It's 4 mana instant speed removal in our deck, because I don't think we're going to play any mountains when we have 4 red deserts um, from Double Mesa and these 2 red duels. So we're only going to have Domain 2. We'll, we'll have Forests and Plains out, but still, 4 mana instant speed removal is still pretty good. Um, and I am looking for non-creatures still, I think. Yeah, I'll take the Leyline Binding. It's also a mythic for collection purposes. That's pretty good. But other great options are the Bluffs and the, the Snakeskin Veil there. All right, pack three, pick four. Second Outcaster Green Blade. Yeah, join the party. Our mana base is going to be perfect. Pick number five, Lassoed by the Law, is like a sorcery speed version of our Leyline Binding, but to make up for the fact that it's sorcery speed, we also get a 1-1 Mercenary when we cast it, so that is not bad at all. That's honestly probably better than Leyline Binding in this deck, but it's definitely good. Pick six, third Outcaster Greenblade. Easiest mana base in the world, I guess. Pick seven now. Uh, I think we still are looking for two mana creatures. Yeah, take up the shield as a non-creature. This is a mess. This view of the deck has not worked out. I'm trying to sort things by mana curve, but also keep the splashes to the side. I think this is about what our creature curve looks like. Anyways, we want a uh, two mana creature. Let's take the uh, the Burrow Fiend here, another little mount. Pick eight, another Holy Cow. I don't think I want removal badly enough to run the boom box. It does blow up two or three of your opponent's permanents, but uh, by the time you're spending six mana to use this, blowing up the land is probably not that relevant. It's mainly like six mana blow up a creature. Just take another cow. Pick nine, another Drover Grizzly, or... Getaway Glamour. Destroy the largest, the highest power creature on board, or flicker one of yours. This seems bad in green. If you're like white, black, or white, red, most of your creatures are probably small enough that this is consistent removal against your opponent, but I feel like when we're on green and we have a lot of four power creatures in our deck, it might not be very good. Pick 10. Uh, we definitely don't need Oasis Gardener in this deck. I don't think I'm going to splash in a ride down, just destroying blocking creatures. Maybe Mobile Homestead? We've got a good amount of mounts to make this a haster. And it can ramp us up, which is cool. I don't know. It's cute. Pick 11. We've got a good amount of mounts, as I just said. So Shepherd of the Clouds is probably excellent. Five mana for a 4-3 Flying Vigilance. That's already almost Sarah Angel stats. Sarah Angel being a five mana 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance. That's been good in basically every limited format ever. Um, and on top of that, you're reanimating one of your mana value three or less permanents if you control a mount. And even if you don't control a mount... You're putting that card back to your hand, so it's excellent graveyard recursion in the late game. What is this pixie? Return a non-fairy non-land permanent to your hand? And get a plus and plus one counter on it? One mana 2-2 two, two flyer that bounces one of your cards, I think. Right? So we currently have 50 cards. We need to cut at least 10 cards out of this deck, which is quite a lot. We have... A whole ton of creatures here, sitting at 24. We can cut at least like seven of those real easily, so that's going to be most of our cuts right there. I think with triple green blade for really consistent mana fixing, as well as a beefier threat potentially, we can cut the naturalist without any graveyard recursion. We've got the one shepherd of the clouds, but like that is more than consistent enough um, without self milling. So we'll cut naturalist. Leave in the green blades. 
It's our other weakest three mana cards. Tumblewag's insane. I guess the Grizzlies and the Holy Cows are pretty equal. Some combination of these could get cut out. We just go one and one, try each of them out, see how it works. I guess with the Sure Shot, maybe running double Grizzlies. Nice. I don't want to completely cut down on Flyers, but we probably have enough removal to do that and be fine. Yeah, let's just go for beef instead of flying stuff. We'll cut the cows and run the Grizzlies. Speaking of cutting flying stuff, I think the Wanted Griffins are our weakest 4-drop. Four mana 3-2 flyer, not that great for the mana cost. The upside here is that if they do kill it or you do trade it off, you do get a 1-1 one -one back out of the deal, but still not insane. Prefer just the huge beef of the giant beaver and definitely the sure shot. I think the sure shot's the best 4-drop we have. Even if we got to splash around for it, we've got triple green blade and dual lands and stuff. So let's cut the griffins. Um, the securities work as four drops as well because we can plot them turn four. We'll keep those and the shepherd in. This looks like a good, like, beefy kind of deck where we're dropping three mana four twos and then trying to get the whole board plus plus one vigilance in the late game. We can do some damage here. And honestly, we have enough beef in the deck. I don't really think we need so many finishers here to where, like, just any flash at the top end is enough. We might not even throw in the Forma Posse anymore. With just, again, so much four power, or so many four power threats to just bash in with anyway. I don't think I need a card that is just dedicated late game win con. Because again, we basically never want to cast this early, so it's just another top end card. Yeah, I'm gonna cut form a bossy. Uh, cut a couple of our one two drop cards because we're still focused on cutting more creatures potentially. Actually, probably cut the mobile homestead as well. Uh, I mean, how many mounts do we have? This is always haste. It's probably not that bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, six of them. Yeah, maybe. Um, Armadillo's not really doing anything in here. Nurturing Pixie again. I don't think we had a ton of synergies for that thing, so probably cut it. Ankle Biter's still fine, because it's always going to trade up into something late game, but honestly, we have so many, like, three mana, four power creatures and stuff like that, we can trade up into creatures one for one anyway. So let's just drop those. I'm thinking Homestead for the last cut, but... We've got enough removal. Betrayal at the Vault could be the last cut as well. And just because it's the kind of removal spell that makes me nervous. Tap out six mana and get blown out by a two mana removal spell or bounce spell. And then you're like, ah, well, I see. When your opponent's tapped out, though, the card's great. Yeah, I don't know about this Smuggler Surprise either, but it's interesting. It's flexible. And... This card will have less opportunities to play with, so we'll try it out. Yeah, I'll cut Betrayal, and we will call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We're on a nice green-white beatdown deck with a really consistent splash for some red spells. So we're just curving out with a bunch of pretty medium two-mana creatures. These are all fine, mostly two-mana, two-two kind of stuff. But once we get to three-mana and higher... We have some really beefy threats throughout the curve. We have green blades perfectly fixing our mana while also being potentially up to like three mana, three fours and four fives later in the game. We've got the tumble wag that's going to make our board state massive with all these plus one plus one counters over time. We have the grizzlies for four power creatures for only three mana. And then at four mana plus is where we get to the super, super beefy stuff that also has really high toughness. Like 4-4 four, four Vigilance Giant Beaver, 4-4 four, four Reach Ward 2 Sure Shot, 4-mana uh, 4-5s four four that buff the whole board with plus one plus one Vigilance with the Stage Coast Securities. They are plot spells though, so they're like a 4-mana four 4-5 four, that's on delay a turn. Uh, unless we have 5-mana and we just cast it for 5. Uh, but that still seems great. And we've got a lot of random mounts in the deck with Drover Grizzlies and Tumblewag and Trained Erynx and stuff like that. So... Our Shepherd of the Clouds is going to be a giant, flying, vigilant game ender that also reanimates one of our permanents from Grave, puts it right back onto the battlefield since we have a good amount of mounts in the deck. Last but not least, off of that red splash, not only are we getting a Cactus Folk Sure Shot, but we're also getting Annie Flash, the veteran, 
which can just hit the board at instant speed, ambush one of our opponent's attacking creatures out of nowhere, reanimate something from our grave at the same time, and then when we untap with her, we go to combat and send her in, we also get to draw a card every turn that she becomes tapped, so just seems pretty insane, probably the strongest card in the deck, but there's plenty of strong stuff to go around for the non-creatures, plenty of excellent removal, uh, a really good combat trick here with take up the shield to protect stuff, just looks like it's got a little bit of everything you want in a beatdown deck like this, and I am happy to play some beefy threats and smash our opponents in the face, so we'll see how it all works out for us as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one on the draw. Pretty happy with this opener on the draw. We need to draw into some lands, but if we hit the mana, this Buried in the Garden is going to solve any mana issues. Unless they blow up the aura. But as long as they don't have main deck enchantment removal, we will be set from our fourth land onward. We are playing against Blue or Red. Blue Red has a double spell theme in this format where they're trying to cast two spells in one turn to get some extra value. So they get to use that plot mechanic where they exile cards to play them later. What is this? Duelist of the Mind. Flying Vigilance. Power equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn, and whenever you commit a crime, draw a card, discard a card once per turn. So that is really big for its mana cost. So I think we have found our Buried in the Garden target. Can't really bury it yet, but we're going to want to kill this quickly. Because it's a 1-3 Flying Vigilance at worst, and if they just spend like a 3 mana draw 2, pretty standard card, there's plenty of commons that'll do that, then they're going to be hitting us for like 3 a turn in the sky. So... Really threatening card. Even if they just like cast a removal spell, like a burn spell or something, they commit a crime and then immediately hit for two instead, because the draw and discard. What is this newt? Um whenever it damages us, they get to flashback something from their grave. Yeah, flashback equal to its mana cost. If they saddle it, they can flash back an instant or sorcery from their grave for free. All right, that's another really threatening rare. This is a very terrifying start from our opponent to the point where I think we have to hold back rather than attacking just to make sure the Newt can't hit us here. If I attack in with the Burrow Fiend, get my damage in, uh, and then they just cast like a two mana, two damage red burn spell on my untapped creature, it's going to be a nightmare for me. They'll kill my only blocker, hit me with the Newt, flash back the burn spell, and kill my whole board. So we need to just make sure the Newt can't make it through, at least. Um, I don't know the set well enough to know exactly what they could have here for the Newt, but it does seem like the most likely things would be them just casting a burn spell in response to us blocking, so... I go for the double block and just see what happens here. Any burn spell I could think of would not work against a double block. It would have to be a combat tricky kind of thing. Alright, excellent. We do kill the newt. Oh no, another flyer? Krom. Four mana, two, three flying. When they cast their second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on and draw a card? Alright, well... So much for the game plan of killing the Duelist of the Mine. Now we have to kill Krom. I'm going to do it post-combat, though, because if we can kill one of these with our take up the shield, that is really efficient. And it would be worth letting them draw a card off Krom next turn. But if they don't block, we don't get to kill one. And we just go ahead and bury the Krom. They could have something that bounces a non-land permanent. That would be a little awkward for us, but they shouldn't have anything out of blue and red that can fully destroy our enchantment. It's feeling decent about Krom just being locked out of the game. That's a lot of mana to have up here. I don't love that. 
think I'm just uh, holding up, take up the shield tricks and seeing what they're going to do about it. You know what, if they block, I actually think I just don't cast anything. Right, we bluff in the attack, but if they block and I try to take up the shield, they respond by getting their burn spell to resolve before I get indestructible. So, yeah, we just bluff in the attack for damage. Feels best. We have uh, five mana here. I can cast two cheap spells or one big one like Sure Shot. feel like they've got the blue counter spell that's counter unless I pay two. And if they have five mana, they get to counter unless I pay two and get a 2-2 two -two flyer, which is super gross. I don't really have a good play around that. I guess it would be like... Probably Homestead and Erynx here. Let them counter Erynx. Yeah, since I ended up playing the homestead, I probably should have just done that. Oh, this isn't a mount, though. Yeah, I would have had to double up to give the haste. Mm. You know what? I don't think I'm under enough pressure to need to also slam down the Erynx into the potential counterspell. Like, with a resolved homestead on board, we're actually winning the race. So if we can just keep up the status quo, that is more than good enough. Okay, cool. Now they're tapped out of the counter. And we resolve a big spell. It's a Leyline Binding. Once again, five mana means just our little Erynx here. And to take up the shield, or just a Leyline Binding, or just a Stagecoach Security. Let's just get the sure shot down. Because that's going to open us up to some really good attacks next turn. The security gives the whole board plus one plus one vigilance, and then the sure shot gives the security haste. Unless they burn away the sure shot here with some kind of really big burn spell. It's got to do four damage. Well, there's the really big burn spell. They're down to one card in hand now, though. I should probably crew the homestead in response, I guess. Have another blocker up. Ooh, they did commit a crime. They get to draw a card, discard a card, and have their duelist be a 2-3 flying vigilance this turn. Not super worried about my life total with take up the shield in hand and a bunch of four power creatures available in the deck. Looks like Homestead gets to hold off the Pulverizer from attacking this turn. I'll preserve that life total. I'm into it. Abraded Bluffs. So there is the sixth mana for the future. So if they have the counter spell, they're tapped out for making the 2 2 flyer off of it. All they do is counter unless we pay two. So, I th think I'm super fine to play into it here. And just kill the Pulverizer. If they don't have it. And if they do, then we got rid of their ability to get a 2-2 two -two Flyer and Counter Spell and get a clean 2 for 1 on us. Yeah, this has some extra text, but it hasn't mattered yet. It's not going to do anything here. It does two damage to us, and they scry one if they cast a second spell. Yeah, let's go. I am perfectly happy with that, and now I am very happy with how I played this one out. Now we got the counter spell to just be a one for one here. We will take a big hit this turn. 
But we can, again, we can come back from this with the take up the shield. Without too much difficulty, unless they draw really well. Since they are playing off the top at this point. Alright, Mine Raider's a decent start to their top decks. Okay, there we go. Seventh mana is beautiful for us. We can drop the security and hold up. Take up the shield. Whoa. Why do I have to full control to crew this thing in response to Stagecoach's ability? That's so annoying. <sighs> Alright, well, I should have held full control mode. I fully intended to have this hit the board, and then before the plus and plus one vigilance responds, or er, resolves, crew the homestead with the varmint. Crew is instant speed. Saddle is not. Yeah, that's super annoying. We're going to miss out on one point of damage this way. Plus, now the Mine Raider is actually threatening to trade with Homestead. That was really bad. One of the perks of playing Digital Magic, sometimes. You don't get to activate your abilities when you're allowed to. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for us. Again, fully intended to crew that in response to security's ability. Emergent Haunting. Okay, so for now that's just going to surveil for them, but that's scary in a top deck war. And then if they don't cast anything next turn, it turns into a 3-3 flyer. Which is pretty scary when I don't have flying blockers. Actually, Varmint can just kill that, so we're fine. Do I sack the Varmint right now? Probably not right now. They're going to get to Surveil 1 either way, and it only costs 1 mana to do this, so I'll sack it next turn after we declare an attack with it. Feels like where it's at. Hmm. I don't love that the security doesn't have vigilance here. Meaning that if I do send it in to try to get a take up the shield kill, I don't have blocks for pulverizer. I could always take up the shield just for the lifelink anyway. Varmint is a free attack here, because no matter how they block, I just blow up haunting. All right, now they're at 8 and we're at 12. If I let them keep the haunting here, they get to surveil a few more cards. But we get to chump block Pulverizer and kill haunting at the same time. It's probably worth the extra 4 life to not kill haunting yet and let them surveil a little bit more. I guess I can always chump with the Erynx as well. Yeah, no. Well, no, they surveilled and kept on the top, which means they're going to draw into something that they're going to cast. They're going to soak up some of their mana, so they're probably not even surveilling more than once this turn. Yeah, if they surveilled something to the top, it means they want to cast something here, which means they don't have all of their mana to spend on surveilling anyway. Could double block and try to kill here, but we only kill it if I don't blow up the emergent haunting with varmint. We kind of need to kill the potential flyer. Oh, 
All right, they don't even surveil a single time. On the plus side, at least they didn't get any extra value off of the haunting. On the negative side, dear god, what do they have? It has to cost at least five mana for them to not be able to hold three up on the haunting. Yeah, we might just be dead. But they do have to block a removal spell here, so let's see. Yeah, apparently whatever was on the top of their deck was very good. Oh, it's just a 2-2 flyer? Okay, I wouldn't classify that as very good, but it is good. They could have surveilled once. Oh, but they wanted to hold up the ability to use all of the abilities if I tried to cast something big. All right, real top deck war in the end here. They're at two life. I think we 100% would have won the game if Arena just let me crew in response to security's ability. Like we probably would have just won by now with our vehicle still around too. So that's awkward. I would hate to lose to uh, just digital magic things. I wouldn't even classify it as a misclick, right? Because... Arena just should give you the opportunity to respond to instant speed stuff with crewing. I guess... It's not like I clicked the wrong button, it's just that I didn't click Control shift It's that I didn't click the right button. Okay, Annie means we probably still win anyway, luckily. Uh, any non-land permanent with mana value 3 or less? Yeah. Varmint, Homestead, Burrow Fiend, or Erynx, and I've got a 4-5 blocker. Well, they have to chump here. Or cast whatever they top decked. Alright, just a chump. Could cast this right now to give them one less opportunity to draw into a counter. I guess since this is flying anyway, it's not like we're going to ambush block, because this doesn't have reach. So I probably will cast this in the end step in response to them tapping out if they're casting something in our end step, which it looks like they are. Yeah. So we'll do this while they're tapped out. No cards in hand. We'll pick up the Burrow Fiend, I guess, is the biggest attacker because of the number of creatures in our grave, if we draw anything to saddle it. I think that seems right. Yeah, we'll take the Burrow Fiend. If I top deck any other creature, I can saddle up the Burrow Fiend and attack with a, like, 5-5. Five, five. So they can't just uh, bounce off of it with the Duelist or anything. It will eat up any blocker of theirs. All right, take one from the Duelist. Ooh, Marauding Sphinx. That's five toughness blocker. Which means if I attack with Annie, we bounce there. But if I attack with Burrow Fiend, they have to chump. Which is why we reanimated Burrow Fiend. And I can't block no matter what I do, because I don't have flying or reach, so we might as well. Saddle there. Annie finds us a Tumblewag to play. I thought we could only play one of the two cards, right? Oh, you can play both of them. You may play those cards, uh, plural. Good lord. Annie's insane. Annie's a draw two every time she's tapped. I thought she was a draw one out of the top two, but you just draw both of them. All right. Close game of magic in the end. Luckily, though, we draw into a couple extra busted rares in the end to make up for some, once again, I don't want to say misclicky, but like digital magic weirdness earlier. If every play that I intended to make went through, we would have been fine without top decking Annie, but uh, luckily we top decked Annie because I did throw away the homestead uh, for not crewing it at instant speed before the uh, security ability resolved. 
All right. Potentially sketchy stuff there, but draw to some bomb rares, and that is a way to close out a game. Actually, that was a pretty rare heavy game. They had three of their own, right? They started the game with two rares, the Archmage's Newt and the Duelist that stuck around basically the whole game. And then they also ended with this Sphinx. Oh, that's an uncommon? I just had enough text it looked like a rare to me. Yeah, but we just, uh, we went to Rare Town in the end with Annie Tumblewag. Anyways, I digress. Let's head and do another game of Magic here. We are starting things off 1-0, heading into game two. All right, here we are on the play for game two. It's not the quickest curve ever. It's three drop, three drop, five drop. But uh, if one of these Grizzlies trades off, which is pretty likely, considering they only have two toughness, then uh, the Shepherd's going to be insane on turn five. Turn five, we get a 4-3 Flying Vigilance and reanimate a 4-2. So I'm pretty happy with this. And there we go. There's our Smuggler's Surprise to refuel later in the game. Alternatively, every creature we have right now is power 4 or greater, so being able to cast this to give our whole board Hexproof Indestructible, that could be a, a tool to use as well. Especially if we have the 4 mana to make our board Hexproof Indestructible and draw a couple cards, that would be Magical Christmas Land. They're Prairie Dogging it. 2 mana, 2, 2 lifelink. If they haven't cast spells, they put plus and plus 1 counters on it. Very good card. Speaking of very good cards, here's our Outcaster Greenblade, which is going to be huge. Um, it's not a mount, though. It's not a mount. So I think I want to attack in, and if they take a trade, then I'll play the Grizzly so I have a mount when I cast the Shepherd. But if they don't take the trade, I'll just play the Greenblade. All right, they don't take the trade. So we'll cast the Green Blade and get a tapped Desert, and then next turn we're probably playing Grizzly holding up Smuggler Surprise. Uh, do I need another green or white? I've got three white sources. I need another green. Let's grab the uh, red-green duel. Boom. Three mana, four, five, draw land from your deck when it hits the board. That's a pretty good deal, I would say. Relatively fair magic card. No, it has been tethered. Goodbye, Greenblade. You tried. You did your best. Stubborn Burrow Fiend. Suppose we are casting that now, since we don't need to hold up Smuggler Surprise for Hexproof Indestructible when they have no blockers up. This gives me a third creature to go ahead and trade off with to try to get something in the grave for the Shepherd. And worst case scenario, maybe we get to saddle it next turn to mill ourselves to have something in the grave to cast this Shepherd. Because I would really like to cast a Shepherd. Prairie Dog's a 3-3 now. Alright, so we've got the full blowout mana for Smuggler Surprise at this point. A green and 1-2-3, so 4 total. Hexproof Indestructible to the board. Plus draw some cards. I need four for that. I could play a two mana spell, but I don't have one, so... Yeah, we just... Send in the four twos. Don't love that blue has a really good counter spell in this format here. It is counter unless we pay two, and we have the two mana up. But they would get the two two flyer. I think we actually just let this trade happen, though, right? Because I've got the Shepherd. Although, again, against all this open mana from a blue deck, I'm going to consistently just be playing around the counter unless they pay two. I'm not going to play a five mana spell when I can play a really perfectly fine four mana spell instead for the turn. I'm like one basic land away from casting Shepherd with counter spell protection. Ooh, they're plotting! They're tapped out of the counter. It's shepherd time, baby. That does mean they didn't cast a spell, so they get the 2-2 spirit off the Wrangler. That's really good. If I green blade, I have three mana up. I'd have a fourth picking up a basic. That is enough to smuggler surprise, but not to shepherd. Still probably worth it. 
Just Smuggler Surprise for four this turn? Sure. Grab a forest. Oh, I should have saddled the Burrow Fiend. I clicked too fast. That's on me. Whoops on that one. We should have saddled the Burrow Fiend with the Green Blade. That one wasn't actually my fault. Misclick kind of thing. I clicked the button that time. What is your one mana removal? Steer clear? Ew. That's actually really nasty. As are those mills. That was unlucky. Well, I guess I'll draw land land. Well, I don't think that turn could have gone much worse. Oh, Wrangler is just going to town. And we milled one of our removal spells. Um, all I can do is pick up a Grizzly with the Shepherd. Right now. They have so many stats over there. How big's the Burrow Fiend? This would attack as a 4-4. Four, four. At minimum. Beaver still attacks as a 4-4 and it holds up on blocks. I guess Burrow Fiend can get reanimated re by the Shepherd, though the Beaver can't. Now let's attack with the creatures that we could bring back with the Shepherd. Oh, this looks pretty fine. Depends how good their tricks are here. There are no tricks, so this is pretty fine. Kind of want to take the green blade now. Grab our last desert. This is just a 5-6. They're over it. I don't know what's in their hand, then. Maybe they're a three-color deck and they're missing on the third color. I don't think they played a land for a couple turns there, so I don't think they're flooded. All right. Things were definitely rocky there for a second. Made some rough misplays there for getting to saddle the Burrow Fiend. Um, and then our Smuggler Surprise trick went pretty poorly for us. They had the one-mana removal in response, but... Attack in with everything, clear out a bunch of the board, then reanimate with Shepard. Looks like it's enough to get there. They are over it, and we are 2-0, heading into game number three. All right, here we are for game three with our uh, three-mana 10-10 again, Outcaster Greenblade at the ready, with two deserts in the opening hand. Thing's going to be pretty nasty. Let's get our white source down immediately so we have all of the options turned to, the Aranx or the Burrow Fiend or the Varmint. Oh no. Are we really gonna do it to them? I think we're really gonna do it to them. Uh I guess I start with the three power creature, and then even if they play like any blocker, we can uh saddle it up with Green Blade to make sure this is first strike. They shouldn't have anything that's like a one four on turn three. So Erinx should be able to get in. Yeah. Erinx will be able to get in. We don't even have to saddle for it to be a fine deal. 3-1 for 2-3 trade. Oh, and we've got an Annie Flash coming. All right, let's start the Green Blade party. Oh, the deserts. We must make them massive. I'm just going to saddle here. Anyway, I'll keep the Aranx on board because we get to scry one as well. Steer clear. Ah... What is our curve looking like? We're going to play a 3-drop and a tap land next turn. So that'll be 
four mana out then turn five we'll have four untapped mana play another tap land so that would be two drop two drop yeah this doesn't fit into the curve at all i think i'll ditch it rather get closer to um, something that can kill any creature whether or not it's in combat since I don't think the mana value of our removal spells really matter here. No! Skewer my green blade at the last opportunity to do so, because it's about to be four toughness. Oh, well, this card's filthy, right? Whenever it attacks while saddled, it gets plus one, plus two till end of turn. Okay, that's not that insane, but it attacks as a four or five, which is still nasty. All right, here is a green blade for another Mesa. Let me play the duel first, though. Saddle this is a 4-5 if I don't saddle green blade anyway, so let's saddle the green blade up, because it can't block the possum regardless. Pretty suspicious, I think, Arena. Let's cry to the bottom. Shuffle. Now it's back on top. All right, I, I get the message. I get the message, Arena. I guess I don't have a choice. Ooh, no attacks. No attacks it is. They are down to 12, so... Life total's getting concerning. Oh, I'm surprised. Kill the green blade and still no attacks, though. They had the removal for green blade. I feel like they'd have been just fine. Play a burrow fiend to saddle up and then attack holding up the steer clear if they try to double block scry this land out of here they don't try to double block so we play a tap land and a varmint got triple green i've got double red i only have one white source Let's grab another white then but playing a tap land there, so next turn I play an untapped land for Annie. If they did double block in a way where I would want to steer clear one of the creatures, then I might have uh, played an untapped land to still play Varmint that turn. Maybe it wouldn't be worth it, though. We'll see. That's pretty good value. Possum to pick up the Naturalist to replay it, draw another land. They're down to nine, though, so I don't know how long they can dirtle around with value plays. They gotta expand that board. Get some blockers. Two creatures in grave right now. Oh my god, we drew into Shepherd of the Clouds? Ooh, sorry, Annie. I feel like Shepherd Steer Clear is kind of beautiful. Oh, I, sh I should have shepherded first, had the green blade grab a planes and play that for land for turn. Because we're definitely picking up a... those are our only options. We're 100% picking up a green blade. Woo! It is just party time over here. Deck is nuts. This will be, what, a 3-3 a three, three, no matter what? Um, the 2-2 two, two doesn't attack into the 2-3, so we'll tap that. Oop. Ooh, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Let's go. And then this would trade into a 2-2 two, two, or a 2-3. But I think the trade's fine, so I'm not going to saddle another creature. Uh-oh. Spagoopio. They went for the double block, and we got the board wipe, so we are now 3-0, and oh, heading into game number 3. Game number 4. I can't do numbers at all. Whatever. At least I can do terrible jokes. Call this a spaghetti western, because it's a uh-oh spaghetti-o kind of game. Alright, here we are on the play for game 4. 
We've got a curve out here, Varmint into Grizzly, and then our top end, Annie Flash, will be sweet. We don't have our splash color yet, though. We don't have any red sources, so... It does depend on whether we find the red source for Annie. But until then, we've got solid plays to start this game off. I am going to start with our Vigilant Varmint over our Omenport Vigilante, because our hand does not have any way to commit a crime in it right now. Alright, Leyline Binding is a crime. But we still play the Grizzly for now, because I doubt we're playing Binding on turn 4. Regardless, just Binding their 3-drop. I guess there are some pretty good, like, 3-mana Legends and stuff available in the set. Like that. Well, I guess we are going to Binding this turn, but it doesn't really matter, because we're still hitting for the exact same amount of damage either way. Right, if I had played the Vigilante instead of the Grizzly on turn 3, then they would both be doing 4 damage. I guess if I played Vigilante instead of Varmint on turn 2, we would have hit for 2 more damage. But I'm perfectly happy with how this has played out. Consuming Ashes, Exile the Grizzly. That's kind of rude. I don't like that that's Exile and not Destroy. Because we have some excellent Graveyard Recursion in our deck, as we've seen. I think we've cast that Pegasus thing in almost every game. Like Hercury Hercules. We're like Hercules just flying around here. It's pretty gross. Well, there we go. Ah, Vigilante's about to be so disappointed with me. Vigilante, I know you really want us to commit crimes, but uh, I'm going to commit a crime while you're still summoning sick so that I can play Annie next turn, because I need to get the tap land out of the way. I'm very sorry, Vigilante. Campbell, where's the soup, though? It's a three mana, two, four. Whoa, okay, double legend me. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control, they get a copy of it. And whenever tokens under battlefield under their control, we lose life, gain life. Okay, so this doesn't really do anything until they're making tokens, because I'm not going to make any tokens. My deck? What about Tiny Bones? Death Touch, when it damages us, they can cast something from our grave. We have nothing in our grave. Alright. These looked really scary. And they're both really cool cards, but they're also both pretty narrow and not good in this scenario. So we're fine. There's a Buried in the Garden. I mean, that commits a crime and we're threatening 6 damage. I think we're just... well... I guess, like, if I cast Annie before we have a permanent in our graveyard, she's not even that insane. She's not full value anyway. Yeah, we do want one of our cards to die before we Annie, so let's go for it. Let's let somebody die here to Tiny Bones, the Varmint, I guess, being the one that will die. Since the Vigilante's got double strike, it'll just first strike away Tiny Bones anyway. Alright, cool. Now we've got something in Grave. I maybe shouldn't have played a land, just in case there's something that makes me discard one card in this format. There probably is. Ew. Gigapede's actually pretty good here. 6-2 and kill my only threat. Well, Annie Flash returns it tapped, right? Yes. So if I Annie Flash at instant speed, I still don't block Gigapede. Um, but I can still do that in the end step. That's fine. What is that? Any number of opponents discard a card. For each opponent who didn't discard a card with mana value 4 or greater, they draw a card. Okay, so I just discard Giant Beaver. Sure. Alright, cool. Then Annie's going to force the Marauder to chump block Annie. And we're going to draw cards off of her. Let's go. Annie Flash is flashing on in. It's an Erinx. Sure. Lands, let's go. Alright, they take a kill. Fair enough. Go to one life, though. Oh, 
they just played a desert on me to ping me for one, and now I'm just thinking, what if I uh, top deck a desert? That's perfect. No, they're at one life, and they have the Vault Plunderer to draw cards. So they have to make me draw the card. <laughs> Saddest Vault Plunderer. God, it would be so sweet if I just ended this game with uh, top deck desert. Uh, Grizzly only gives Trample when it attacks while saddled. So... I think we're saddling the Erinx with Annie here so that she doesn't trade off. Um, but we still draw the two cards. And then also they can't trade into the Erinx. Right, Burrow Fiend and a Tap Land. Ooh. Give our whole board plus one, plus one Vigilance. I'll keep that. Oh no, Trick. Ooh, that's really good. Fake your own death so they get to keep the Gigapede around and kill my Grizzly. It's not good enough to kill Annie, but it's still pretty solid. One final draw step for our opponent. Let's see what they can get here. Maybe they'll get another Vault Plunderer and they'll just target themselves this time. Now that I have three attackers against two blockers. If it isn't removal or a blocker, they're dead anyway, so... Might as well. Can you target yourself with a desert? No. That would be fun. Be another fun way to concede in this format. Get in there, Vigilant Team. I guess that actually would mean I don't draw anything off of Annie this turn. Huh. Well. Maybe I didn't want Vigilance. Yeah, I actually probably should have just post combated the security. Does not matter. They don't have the instant speed removal in hand, so they do die. To the three attackers against two blockers, and we are now 4 and 0, oh, heading into game 5. Here we are for game number 5. Definitely a slower hand here, and we are on the draw, so that will make it even slower. But the mana base is great. We've got solid removal. And we have the card draw to get ahead in the late game. Ooh, mobile homestead. And we have the mount to give it haste. I'm probably just going to cast it right now, though. Well, if I cast it, they can kill with varmint. I might have to just steer clear. I probably should just steer clear the varmint. Hope they don't have... Uh... Combat trick to buff it here. Combat trick would be pretty annoying. We would still trade steer clear for a combat trick, so it'd still be a one for one trade, but we would take extra damage in doing it. Ooh, what is that? Is that the Wolverine thing? Yeah, this card's great. When enters the battlefield, exile the top card of your library until end of turn, you can play that card. So it's like a three mana three two that draws you a card because they can cast it for free next turn since they plotted it. So they have all of their mana up to cast whatever they draw into. So that's pretty good. Here is Drover Grizzly. Again, it is four mana to draw cards and give Hexproof Indestructible. Yeah, so to get the three for one off of this, I could do that next turn where I attack him with Grizzly and then I just Hexproof Indestructible plus draw two. So we'll probably go for that, even though I do have the Homestead for later. Although, with all that mana up, can be more awkward. Hmm. I guess if I hold all of my own mana up here, I've got double combat trick, where I just take up the shield, and if that somehow doesn't resolve, we can also smuggler surprise. So we can double up the tricks. Alternatively, I could just set up the homestead and send in with that, and if they want to spend removal or trick on homestead, it's not as bad for us. I'll set up the homestead here. And if this is just going to be a trade, we'll just take the trade. But if they try to change it from being a trade, that's when we're, we'll combat trick and try to blow them out. But I don't want to be the first one to blink here. I don't want to be the first one to cast a trick and have them just have their own trick in response. All right, and if they just take the damage, they just take the damage. That's cool, too. Ooh, 
green source. Tons of open mana again. Yep, tons of open mana again. All right, well. Still think attacking for one less damage by sending in the homestead instead of the grizzly is better because it potentially draws us a card. It's definitely worth the one less point of damage. Yeah, there we go. Drew the card this time. That looks beautiful. Well, I've got instant speed removal with Leyline Binding if I don't do anything else. Or I have the 4-mana Smuggler Surprise to counter their removal and draw two. Worst case scenario, it'll be like our first Smuggler Surprise where we draw two lands, but even two lands are somewhat useful here. We've got a lot of spells to spend all that mana on. Nothing again. Well, uh, show me a hexproof trick, I guess. Two more backup removal spells if this doesn't pan out. Ooh, two for one removal? That's nasty. And now we have no threats, so we're just going to stare at each other. Voracious Varmint. Oh my god, no. And they have the Varmint for the Binding, so they can blow up the Binding and draw another card. Well, that went horrendous again. I need seven mana to draw the two creatures and immediately put them on the board, and I have six right now. As we hold off. There we go. Well, let's take two a turn for a while. Because enchantment removal is super bad against Voracious Varmint. Alright, they are going to go ahead and get the Wolverine back draw card. Yeah, I guess this game would have went better for us if we just sat here as patiently as possible and just never cast anything. Just constantly held up our uh, hexproofy tricks. Alright, so we can deal with Jolene and... Um, get a mercenary here. That feels better than dealing with Jolene and getting one mana. There's one hexproof trick in the format. There's snakes can veil, and that's it. Of course. Well, still double block with a one one and a two two varmint here. I guess I can't though, because Jolene makes the treasure and can sack it at instant speed to kill the mercenary. Yes, yeah, it's bad. The right instance here from our opponent. It's working out perfectly for them. These are rough. Cac Tarantula. Big old 6-5 now, and they draw a card if we target it. And Prickly Pear for a super wide board. Yikes. Now we can bury it in the Garden Jolene and have four mana up to play Omenport Vigilante and take up the shield. We're not dealing with Cactarantula at all. Green and two to draw the four. And another five, three, eight, six, seven. It actually is eight mana for the whole thing. Nine if we want to get the Hexproof trick too. I think I have to let them draw the card because I just can't... Uh, Kill the Cactarantula with blocks, but I can block Jolene with a 3-3 Indestructible Lifelink.
the top deck another trick. Yes. God. Well, this game, game could have gone a lot better if we were, like, insanely patient with our tricks. But... I don't know if we could be winning here because they just keep hitting action after action after action. Four mana left. Let me block one thing. These prickly pairs are just a massive board state here. Jolene's got two treasures to ping for two. Six, seven, eight. Eight mana. I can eight mana smuggler surprise. Which is, I guess, more than just playing one sure shot. But I don't think it's enough to not die on their next attack. We did hit creature, creature. Got two deserts on board, so I can play the 4-4 four, four Reach Ward 2, or I can play with two deserts. This will be a 3-4. I guess we go for the bigger stuff. I have to block Jolene's. They're going to get to kill the security with treasure flings. Three, four, five, six. They can put me to one life. If they have a combat trick, we're dead too. They're just like plus one, plus one. Alright, they're going to kill the security. Means less damage to our face. Now we're down to two. And land from our opponent, but land off the top. It doesn't mean we're dead. If they draw absolutely nothing, we go to one. We did really need to hit just straight gas from here to stabilize. That is definitely not nothing. Oh my god, they gain three draw card, period, no matter what from this thing. And it's a 6-6 six, six trample. And if it dies, they just get a new one. Alright, well, GG. Four and one it is, heading into game number six. Alright, here we are for game number six. Excellent opening hand here, pretty pumped about this one. We go for turn three green blades. We need to get the tap land out of the way immediately, even if we have a potential open port vigilante that we want to commit crimes for. I want to lock in turn three green blade more than I want to lock in double strike. Magda? All right, I'll absolutely trade vigilante for Magda if they attack in. She's going to get a treasure every time they commit a crime, and if they get three treasures, they get a 4-4 flyer and just destroy my soul. And there they go. Crime land, that's the first crime committed already. I really... would like to hit a desert because it buffs Greenblade and... Gives Vigilante double strike, but I definitely see an argument for just grabbing a basic to guarantee that we can kill Magda next turn. Um, although alternatively, maybe they just trade here because they know we can commit a crime next turn. Yeah, they don't. They don't trade. But yeah, this means we're not going to kill Magda until turn five, which might be after they have too much treasure. Oh, never mind. If they cast a Rakdos, they don't have too much treasure. But now I don't get to kill Rakdos this turn. But obviously I couldn't have known they had Rakdos. 
6-5 Flying Trample. Whenever they sacrifice another creature, exile cards equal to its mana value. They can sack a creature to give it indestructible. Okay, so all my exile removal still works fine. So they sack something to give it an indestructible and cast something out of my library. That's insane. Good grief. All right. I've only cast two sp two spells, but they're both <laughs> absurd rares, so we're not having a lot of fun over here. It's it's not looking good. So I guess we still need to play our land for turn to lock in our removal for the turn after this. Um, but then I think we smuggler surprise for three over homestead. Can't get in at all, no matter what. Yikes. This only gives Hexproof to power 4 or greater, not toughness 4 or greater. Wow, yeah, that's a huge blowout. Oh, it's 2 to a creature token. Never mind. Okay, it's still bad, but it's not a blowout. I thought that was going to do 6 to 1, 2 to the other. It only shoots tokens. So never mind. I will take 6. Once again, no hexproof off the sack, right? Yeah, just indestructible. So we just kill Rakdos next turn, and that's a crime for the Vigilancy. I am still going to want to kill Magda soon, but we really need to kill Rakdos first. Land, land, creature, creature. We've got a really good six drop in hand, although I suppose I have Buried in the Garden for more mana as well. We definitely take the Tumblewag, but I kind of think we take land over Burrow Fiend, potentially. I think so. All right. So I will have six mana up next turn, even if I don't play Buried in the Garden, so we'll go for Lassoed by the Law instead to get a blocker. And also, the Mercenary's ability is really good with a double striker on board. Make a three power double strike on each attack. Next turn's probably gonna be buried plus tumblewag, I think. Because we'll have six lands, but with Buried in the Garden, we get another mana. Ew. Vanishing Burst, get Rakdos back. They don't get haste, but they do get a second treasure for the freaking Magda. So now that I have to spend removal on Rakdos again, they might just get a 4-4 flyer out of Magda. This triggers every turn they can commit a crime. Yeah, so if they have an instant speed crime here, they will have a 4-4. Dragon on blocks. Alright, well, we are definitely team buried in the garden on Rakdos. They could sack something in response to draw a card from our deck, but they can't save Rakdos. So they let Rakdos die. Then we cast the Tumblewag to get plus and plus some counters on the board. I mean, they are locked in for a chump block here, right? Yeah, they're already locked in for a chump block either way, so I think I want to have a 3-3 on blocks. I'm going to target the Tumblewag instead of the Vigilancy. I'd be really surprised if they don't chump, but maybe they won't. They get to draw a card for chumping and stop six points of damage. They don't want to do it, though. All right. So I got my 3-3 blocker to hold off their stuff if they don't have more removal. 
And then of course, plenty of other threats to play. We can grind this out. Uh-oh. Stoic Sphinx is very hard to deal with. Hexproof if they haven't cast a spell. Well, luckily they have had to spend all their treasure to be able to double spell there. So we don't have to worry about a 4-4 flying token. But a 5-3 flying hexproof is still a huge deal. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana here. If I cast Green Blade, I'll still have 1, 2, 3, 4 mana left over. A fifth if I grab a um, basic. Kind of like Green Blade... I guess I can't commit a crime here no matter what. What could I reanimate from Grave? I could reanimate a Green Blade or a Burrow Fiend if I play Annie. If I play Annie, I reanimate a tap to Green Blade, grab a basic, and play an Eryx in the same turn. And then I can saddle Tumblewag with Annie to draw more cards. But I can only play them this turn. So that doesn't even really matter. The exile ability on Annie. It would just be the most creatures I can put on board this turn to threaten the biggest swing next turn. So it is probably still worth it. Alright, we need a plane specifically. Unless I play Homestead. I guess Homestead's haste, so that wouldn't have been bad. Still gonna go Aranx though, right? Because we're not gonna haste in a 3-3. They've got a 3-4 blocker. I guess I can crew it and then give it plus one with the mercenary. Yeah, you know, that's probably fine. You know what? No, though. No. I'm just gonna go vigilante power here. got no crimes to commit. Alright, clear out the Magda. Don't worry about that ability in the future. Seems fine. Or, yeah, one for one trade into Lone Shark also seems fine. We're dead in three swings in the sky. But they're at six life. So we are hoping we can outrace that. Got a wide board. But so do they. That's four creatures out for blockers. And they top deck into the key to the vault. Hopefully that's not as scary as it sounds. Equip three. When a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at that many cards from the top. Exile one. Cast it for free. That's pretty dang scary. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana, 5 for security, 3 for green blade, 5, 6, 7, 8, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, 9, I don't have the mana to do all three of these things, so I just go green blade and security then, right, play a tap land to buff both the green blades, I do have the mana to do a tap land and still play the security. And everybody's got Vigilance, so we send in with everybody. Uh, plus one, plus one counter on the Mercenary, I guess? So everything's just an insane threat? What does this do if I saddle it? Double the number of plus ones on a creature? Sure, we'll saddle this with a summoning sick card, because everyone has Vigilance anyway. So I don't need to keep my summoning sick cards. I can just saddle anything that's worth saddling. It would be these two. And I still have all the blockers. Double counters on that. To spread the damage out as much as possible. And math is for blockers. Is 
is eight damage, but they gain one. That is dead, right? That is lethal. We are now five and one, heading into game seven. All right, here we are on the play for game seven. Let's get things rolling with that Burrow Fiend, I think, right? Because this can get really big real fast, depending on how we mill. And by milling, we make sure there's something to reanimate with Annie. The Smuggler Surprise is going to be more self-mill. I think the Burrow Fiend could be big. All right, we've got our turn two Badger Beast mount on board. Our opponent is on a red deck. Ah, oh, you can't poke your opponent's rock. You can usually poke your opponent's pet and just see what it does. Usually gets angry at you. But you can only jiggle the rock. I can't jiggle opponent's rock. All right, red, black, some Rakdos nonsense from our opponent, but nothing yet. Well, Homestead's going to be haste here. I think, again, it's going to be worth the tiny bit less damage to potentially draw an extra card. If there's a land on top, we just slam it on the board. We've drawn a card worth of value. Honestly, slightly better than just drawing a card because you immediately ramp up as well. No! The Sheriff Mobile Homestead. What is this, Howl's Moving Castle or something? How can you declare the homestead the Sheriff? So rude. Yeah, now they just hit huge value off of the Vault Plunderer. Dang. Well, well, well. No creatures in Grave right now, so it is quite the risk to send in Burrow Fiend. Probably just have to steer clear. But if I hit exactly two creatures, then it'll be sick. But that's quite unlikely. I think I'd rather just draw some cards this turn and hold up steer clear for later. Well... No, let's just be mana efficient. Let's just steer clear a 3-1. That's fine. So I'm only going to smuggle or surprise for 3 anyway. And there's always the chance they play around a trick here and don't even block. And then it's just free damage. Alright. Block is solid for our opponent here. But we we're just going to steer clear that thing anyway. Oh, cool, that's too big to steer clear. So just a 5-5 five, five Flying Trample. Yeah, the additional ability doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's just a 5-5 five, five Flying Trample. But a 5-5 five, five Flying Trample is a problem. It's a problem for sure. Find Land Varmints. Zero creatures in grave, so no stubborn burrow fiend attacks. Good thing this thing doesn't have vigilance, because we will get some big counter attacks in. The mine raider for 3 2, and this is an outlaw scorpion dragon rogue. This thing gives. Oh, any creature menace or lifelink each turn? All right. That is horrific. So if we don't get rid of this apothecary, if they commit a single crime, they just give their 5-5 five, five flying trampler lifelink and we will never outrace it. Um, so now we can Annie back a tapped homestead or a tapped erinx. Magda. Uh-oh. If they commit a crime, they get a treasure. They gain a bunch of life. They just pop off. I was going to say, I would be surprised and excited if they attacked with the Apothecary. I would slam dunk the varmint right in that thing's face.
All right, Annie, this is going to be a difficult race. We're trying to outrace a potentially life-linking scorpion dragon, so... Let's see what you can do for us in our end step. Be very sad if they have murder. Double black and one destroy a creature at instant speed. Like to get at least one swing in with Annie to draw the two cards. But ideally, she sticks around forever. Still got to do her in the end step here to get rid of the summoning sickness. Get that mana investment out of the way. Luckily, she is a two for one no matter what. Even if they do have the removal to blow up Annie, she has gotten an Erinx back. Dang, looks like the removal here. At least we're getting them to commit a crime without getting any crime value. They don't get lifelink value here. The treasure token could matter. It could stack up, but... The lifelink doesn't do anything. Okay, so we have one creature in grave right now. Burrow Fiend attacks is a 3-3. Three, three. I saddle it up. I mean, this is a pretty simple game of magic. We just die to the flyer if we don't find removal for the flyer. Let's just get the game rolling again. And see if that happens. I'm a little sad to mill the Shepherd, but it wasn't going to be big enough to block their Flying Trample card anyway, so it wasn't even that helpful. We'll just bring back our vehicle and chump block. Three damage. Alright, we got one last draw step. Find a way to deal with the flyer. That doesn't deal with the flyer, so that's just game. There's no way to gain any life on board. There's no way to get any reach on board. We simply get hit four times by a 5 5 flyer, and that will end games of limited magic. We are 5 and 2, heading into game number 8. Here we are on the play for game 8 with a sicko mode curve. We've got the Erynx into the green blade with the Shepherd in the late game to reanimate anything because most of these creatures are mounts. I actually probably play the Grizzly first and just go maximum damage here. So I don't actually need any lands from green blade yet. Saddle on up, scry one. Get a first strike swing in. Scry into the sure shot. Uh, sure. I mean, I'll play the... <laughs> okay, one was not intended, but I'll take it. Uh, I'll cast the green blade and grab a red desert and play that tapped next turn. So we will have sure shot mana. Uh-oh, is this going to be another game I just lose because I didn't draw removal? Might be. Matter Weaver is 100% a must-kill immediate kind of threat. We can't kill it immediately here. Well, our deck does have a lot of removal. We've got like four exile spells in here. No, we've got a steer clear and three exile spells. We have leyline binding. Um, got a lot of green sources. Let's grab the red white source. We have leyline binding and buried in the garden and the new one that makes a mercenary an exile something. And. Um, the steer clear. So we've got four removal spells to draw on to. Alright, here goes the matter weaver popping off. It's already just a three mana, two, four, plus a one, one. Incredible deal, even if we kill it next turn. We do not kill it this turn.
Grizzly's still the only creature that can reasonably attack in on this board state. Takes the trade, happy with that, because now Shepard gets us some value here. Reanimating it. Sheriff of Safe Passage. Now Matter Weaver's a 3 mana 2, 4 plus 2, 1 ones. And it made this thing absolutely massive. They're at 11 here. Trample Haste on my power 4 graders. Which will not include Drover Grizzly. Because I don't have the mana to play another Drover Grizzly right now. So I would send in one chump attack on the ground with Drover Grizzly, and then the other ground attacks aren't good. Yeah, I'm not attacking on the ground at all right now. Even if I play the sure shot, all I do is hit with the shepherd. Yeah, no amount of saddling does anything. All right. And we play the sure shot so our future four power creatures have haste, and we play the varmint to get a wide board state so I could... Drop a hasty grizzly next turn, give my whole board trample with one other grizzlies, and hope that that is enough to find lethal. Six mana up, instant speed? Okay, well... That gives us a shot. That is... The cast, the security, and prey for lethal. Saddle a creature, all my creatures gain trample. What is the lowest power? Lowest power is Varmint. All right, there's the concession. No instant speed removal from our opponent. They cluttered up the board really, really well, but that was a fantastic top deck in the end for the security with trample to the whole board from Grizzly. If it weren't for that security, we would be in a rough spot against just a single removal spell to stop the Shepherd in the sky. Because again, our ground attacks, uh, we would be losing one creature for free. But the Grizzly was putting in a lot of work with that trample too, so. Alright, I was real scared of whatever they had in hand, but it looks like it was probably just some mana flood for our opponent, luckily enough for us. We are now 6-2, and two, heading into the final boss. Our final game of Magic for today, win or lose. It all comes down to this one. Well, this is a really awkward opening hand. 100% tap lands? I mean, three different crimes in hand alongside the Vigilante still seems pretty cool, so... I'm gonna keep it, but we need to draw some lands, preferably some untapped lands. Reckless Lackey, just get that ball rolling with a 1-mana one 1-2 one first strike haste. Well, we'll trade 1-drops here with our steer clear. I think. They don't have the mana to sack and get their treasure yet. So let's just get that out of here. Blood Hustlers the play. Perfect. Untapped mana means we get to cast Green Blade this turn. Although. Could still play Vigilante first. I mean, Green Blade's gonna be like just as much damage. This thing's gonna be attacking for four next turn. Picking up one of our red sources. Yeah, send in a 4 5 holding up a take up the shield should be pretty nasty. Alright, we're not even going to need to take up the shield here. They've got three power. Yeah, even if I just play um, an untapped land, they can't block well. So I guess I will. In that case, since their blocks are already bad, that way I can cast Vigilante and hold up, take up the shield. And then I still have a crime to commit next turn, even if I don't want to cast removal. I just play a Braided Bluffs. I crime land them in the face. And our Vigilante's a double striker. It's 
Speaking of committing crimes, this can do it every turn for one mana, which is going to keep getting counters onto the Blood Hustler. So that's a pretty filthy combo. Can load those counters up. What is this? Gain control of a creature till end of turn, untap it, give it haste. Uh, they only have one desert, though, so they're just not doing that much damage. Okay. If they've got a one-mana way to sacrifice a card, that's going to be devastating. I think there is one, though, right? One mana, sack a creature, draw two. At least we find a good block here. Since their mana is committed to sack and green blade. Is there a one mana sack a creature, shoot a different creature? That would suck. Okay, no. We do kill the Blood Hustler. But now they sack green blade to draw two? Yep. Alright. I mean, they've got four cards in hand, but we've got the lead on board. Commit a crime and send in for six here. Pretty gross. I think I'm going to plot the security so that next turn I can commit a crime again and get the huge Vigilant and the extra bonus. Oop, main phase two, please. There we go. Plot. This is a really nice plot synergy here of getting to play this and commit a crime in the same turn for Vigilancy. Oh. What? <laughs> Modern magic bears are stupid. We've got some stupid rares in our deck, so I am one to talk, but... Jesus. Four mana for a 2-4 and two one ones that have good abilities at worst, and also all of your outlaws have haste. Like Forsaken Miner and stuff. Okay. Uh, well, luckily they're just dead, right? Ten. No, I hit them for eight. Eight is not lethal. I do have a Shepherd of the Clouds, but I feel security... Security and commit a crime killing the boss is better. Put them to two life. If our outlaw had haste, our mercenary here, then they would be dead. At knife point, all of their creatures have first strike during their turn, but only during their turn, so it doesn't help them on blocks. They're at two life, so I don't think an instant speed way to commit a crime really does anything here, because it's already lethal if we let it through. Or if they let it through, they've got one, two, three, four blockers against three attackers, even one removal spell doesn't get there. Yeah, we just play Shepard, and I think it's fine to just do that post-combat. Yep. Boop, boop. And then Shepard. And this should be a winning game from here, looks like. Ooh, they do get another 1-1 one -one from this thing. Forgot about all that bonus text. That's dece for them. Chump chump. Sure. Here's Shepard then. Pick up a desert, play it. Oh, I don't have a mount on board this time. Shoot, that's the first time that's happened. All right, well, uh, Shepard's still better than Leyline Binding this turn. But not insane. Okay. Take four and then just kill them on the crack pack. They only have two blockers up. Yep, just play land for turn. That is super dead. Well, no, three blockers up. But they're at two life, and I can tutor a ping land to kill them. I don't have the mana to ley line binding and tutor up a ping land, so let's just go for the ping land. Again, I don't need to pre-combat it, because whether or not I commit a crime, Vigilante just kills them if it gets through. Oh no, they gain a life from the Blood Hunter too? Oh, yikes. 
Hold up. Well, I just kill the Reach creature then, right? Yeah, if I kill the Reach creature, we just deal four in the sky. Okay, this was almost real bad, but if they just can't block a flyer, they're dead. Alright, there, there's too many things going on in this game. That was a lot of misplays. But also a lot of very powerful spells from our deck to get through all this. And still find the kill. Alright. 7-2 and two today. Really, really happy with this deck. This is definitely going to be a complex format. I am definitely feeling it uh, that I'm not super familiar with the cards right now, just starting the format out. It's been a lot of misplays today. Luckily, the... The deck idea, the drafting all went super, super well, so despite playing pretty sloppy today, we can still find our way towards a 7-win run uh, just by having drafted a super powerful deck. So really, really happy with, uh, with our drafting today, even if the gameplay was real rocky there a lot of times. I think uh, the green blades were insane. These things were going much later than I think they should uh, in the future. Been really happy with those. These Grizzlies played a lot better than they looked. All of the mount cards in general, being able to do the Shepherd thing was was nuts. This thing was as powerful as uh, most of the rares in the format, honestly. This Shepherd, the Clouds. So, really, just overperformers all over in this deck. Everything was pretty phenomenal in here. Um, Smuggler Surprise was kind of whatever, um, but I wanted to try it out. Because I was like, eh, it's kind of whatever. I mean, it's not like, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look good. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. So, I don't know about that one still. Yeah, I don't know. Not a lot to say here. Really fun event. I think pretty much all these cards played pretty dang well. Yeah, I mean, I'd recommend drafting basically everything that we drafted today. All these kind of cards are really solid. But especially all of our, like, uncommons and higher. We got some really powerful stuff there with the triple green blade and the shepherd. The buried in the garden lassoed by the law style uh, enchantment based removal was great. And then, of course, our rares were busted. Ornery Tumblewag and Annie Flash are wild, wild magic cards. So a lot of uh, a lot of winning off the back of just super powerful cards. But that's how it does. If you open the powerful cards, you draft them, you play them. And you win some games. That'll be 7-2, and two, a maximum prize run for our very first draft of the brand new format. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you're interested in seeing some more like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.